something strange is happening in the forests of Africa. Chimpanzees are doing things no one has seen them do before. They were in a partying mood. But that's not all. At a site called Fongoli in Senegal, they've also invented a remarkable way of catching a meal. They're making spears and hunting, just like our ancestors. Are these apes developing human-like skills in their own environment? After all, the great apes, chimpanzees, orangutans, gorillas, and bonobos seem so much like us. It's hard not to feel a deep connection. We have come to see that we're much more similar to them than we ever imagined. But for every revelation about the power of their minds, another shows up a stunning difference. If you think that human genetics and ape genetics are 99% the same, what we've managed to achieve in our current position on Earth is so strikingly different from that of the apes. We're trying to figure out what is it that makes us human. What's the little difference that makes the big difference? How big is the gap between them and us? What's holding them back? In a remote part of Africa, there is something new under the sun. Our closest living relatives are getting bold. Chimps are supposed to be afraid of water, but this young male is climbing down for a dip. He keeps a hand on the natural safety line as he overcomes his fear. Has a boy or girl ever had so much fun in a swimming hole? Wild chimps have never been seen before playing like this. At Fongoli in Senegal, anthropologist Jill Preetz and psychologist Andrew Whiten are getting an extraordinary glimpse of chimp emotions. The personality of a chimpanzee is extremely excitable. I've hardly ever seen a facial expression like that. I mean, that was extreme excitement to, to the stage of kind of losing control. It's not merely just to, to cool off. I mean, it, the juveniles have fun. I mean, they play in the water. They play a lot in the water. This is only one of a rush of discoveries that is painting a surprising picture of ape minds. They are more like us than most researchers ever imagined. One by one, the skills and emotions we once thought were uniquely human are being found in apes. Still, specific mental gaps, the little differences that make the big difference, will ultimately explain why we study them and not the other way around. While the swimming hole is revealing chimps' emotions in the field, a new laboratory study is showing off their amazing rational powers. 
At the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, psychologist Joseph Kohl places a peanut inside a clear tube. How can the chimpanzee get the snack? She's never seen this puzzle before. For 10 minutes, there is no solution in sight. And all of a sudden, boom, they solve it. They have to understand that they can use the, the water as a tool. This is interesting because the water itself, it doesn't have any shape. Using water as a tool seems like something we would do on a good day. Another tool is being put to remarkable use by wild chimps in their quest for a meal. Back in Senegal, Jill Preetz has been keeping a close eye on the chimps' eating habits. Throughout Africa, chimps eat almost anything, and they have a particular taste for meat. Here, their favorite prey is the bush baby, a small nocturnal primate. But these chimps aren't catching bush babies barehanded. Preetz has seen chimps making spears and using them to hunt. Andrew Whiten hopes to join the ranks of the few who have witnessed this extraordinary behavior. To make a spear, a chimp starts by breaking off a branch, then sharpening the tip. All in the quest to catch a bush baby in its daytime sleeping hollow. So the next step would be that the chimp would approach the cavity and sometimes look in, take the tool, jab, forcefully into the cavity multiple times. It may not be ice pick sharp, but when driven by an arm up to five times as strong as a human's, it's a potentially lethal weapon. They always either sniff it or lick it when they withdraw the tool. What they may do is actually break open the entire cavity and if they're lucky find a bush baby inside. Break, strip, sharpen, stab. These chimps take a series of distinct steps in a carefully premeditated hunt. Preetz and Whiten are closing in on the answers. Most of the 20 spear hunts observed by Preetz have taken place during the rainy season. Over time, she has seen every stage of the kill. A chimp is inspecting a hollow, looking for a bush baby. She breaks off a branch and makes a spear. The first time I saw a chimp make a tool, I think I said something like, where is she going and what is she going to do with that tool? She nibbles the tip to sharpen it. Then, with the aid of her foot, she aims the point into a hollow. Preetz has made a landmark discovery. Never before has any non-human species been known to routinely make and use deadly weapons. So what does spear hunting reveal about how chimpanzees think? Preetz and her team have seen about half of the chimps here brandishing weapons, which means spear hunting has spread through much of the group. That seems natural to us, but generating ideas and sharing technologies 
is one scientific definition of culture. For Whiten, culture includes the human arts, from beer to Beethoven, but it also covers the rudimentary traditions of ape societies. Whiten is trying to discover what kind of mind can lead an ape to culture. Young watch their parents, sometimes very intently, and over the following months and years they, they acquire that behaviour. So you have to be able to copy. To prove that one ape can copy another, a student of Andrew Whiten's devised an experiment. At the University of Texas, Antoine Spiteri has built a kind of slot machine for apes. He loads it with a grape. To get the fruit, a chimp must first turn a disc to allow the grape to drop through a hole. Next, a chimp must move a door that opens a handle to release the fruit payout. Spiteri now trains a chimp named Judy how to work the device. On her own, she would never work it out. But thanks to a sweet liquid reward, she learns the sequence's two steps. Rotate, then push. Next, Judy's groupmates enter. Spiteri wants to know if, just by watching, the spectators will learn the technique. Can these apes ape to win this food-finding game? One chimp seems to think she's got it and shoves Judy aside. A minute ago, Judy was the only one with the knowledge. Now, another has it, and quickly the trick spreads throughout the group. But for Spiteri, the most important question remains. Have the next door neighbours also learned the solution? They have no social ties to the original group. In fact, they are hostile towards them. Will they set that aside to keep up with the Joneses next door? In no time at all, they're working the slot machine like old pros. Rotating, then pushing the handle. Learning by imitation is an essential skill for culture, and culture, along with the complex thoughts and emotions behind it, was long believed to be uniquely human. The history of Western thought has always been premised on the idea that they're beasts and they're humans. Then humans uh, are touched by the spark of God and beasts are just beasts. Something of a revolution came in 1960, when a young researcher with support from the National Geographic Society set up camp in Tanzania. Jane Goodall observed that chimp emotions seem much like our own, especially the tenacious bond between mother and baby. At a site in Western Africa, Japanese researchers reported the story of an ill two-year-old chimp. Her mother touches her forehead as if to check for a fever. As the baby's strength ebbs, her mother remains devoted. When I see the scene of the mother looking at the baby, I really recognize the emotional life of chimpanzees are so similar to us. For weeks after the baby's death, the mother carries her baby's body. Is the mother grieving? Can an ape be in denial? It is impossible to say exactly what the mother is thinking, but hard to dismiss her feelings.
Putting ape emotions on the map was just one of Goodall's accomplishments. She also found powerful evidence of their intelligence. Goodall was the first to report chimps making and using tools. In this case, to fish for termites. When she found termite fishing, people were so surprised and thought we should change the definition of humans or we should include chimpanzees as humans. What Goodall couldn't have known was that at a place called Gualugo, other chimps had an even more sophisticated way to catch termites. First, they use a big stick like a shovel to open the ground. Then they switch to a slender probe to pull up the insects. Perhaps Goodall's most astonishing discovery was that chimps are hunters. She watched a troop catching colobus monkeys by hand. Although no one has established that they coordinate their efforts, the chimps appear to be cooperating. And cooperation is, after all, one of the key drivers of human culture. Could apes speed up their culture by working together? Imagine a group of chimps armed and dangerous, hunting as a band. Why isn't the Earth the planet of the apes? Do apes even have the capacity to cooperate? A series of new studies reveals the rudiments of teamwork in the great apes. But they still come up short. In an experiment at the Great Ape Research Institute in Japan, a chimp knows that food is hidden under a stone. Researchers replace it with a heavier stone. If two chimps each know about the food, can they work together? In repeated trials, no pair of chimps has ever cooperated to synchronize their pulling. If one chimp is replaced with a person, the other animal still doesn't collaborate, at first. But eventually, it figures out the sweet rewards of cooperation. Ultimately, the chimp learns to ask for a helping hand. A needy chimp may well recruit help from a human, but will it ever offer assistance? One of the most surprising findings uh, of all of my years of studying apes has been that they actually will help humans. If you're reaching for an out of reach object, if they understand what your goal is, then they will help you. Of course, if you've dropped your banana, you can forget it you won't be getting it back. Chimps can understand what someone else wants. One study shows that they can even interpret another's actions as good or bad. In Leipzig, Germany, a chimpanzee is about to receive a tray of food. At the same time, he's given a rope under the platform. He can pull at any time to collapse the platform and end the experiment. Another chimp now enters the cage. 
This chimp is free to pull a second rope on top of the tray. The first chimp is ticked off. He pulls the hidden rope and the game is over. Was he generally outraged or taking specific revenge on the thief? To find out, it is the researcher that now moves the food. Once again, the first chimp has lost his meal to the second. All that has changed is who is responsible. In trials where the researcher moves the food, the first chimp is much less likely to crash the platform. That would punish an innocent chimp. So chimps have a sense of justice, and they can cooperate with people. Can they collaborate spontaneously with each other? Researchers place fruit on a board just out of a chimpanzee's reach. The chimps are behind bars to keep them from the food and because they can be impulsive, strong and dangerous. When a solo chimp can reach both ends of a rope, it hauls them in and gets all the food. But on some trials, the ends are too far apart. If the chimp pulls just one end, the rope unthreads. The chimp has another option. He can unlock a door to bring in a helper who has been watching. The two chimps now work together. But a series of trials shows that this teamwork doesn't come easily. The helper must be a friend and the food divided into separate dishes. Can a more loving ape cooperate better? At Lola Yabonobo Sanctuary in the Congo, victims of the pet trade are raised by human mothers. When these bonobos grow up, they will spend their days outdoors becoming savvy about life in the forest. Bonobos are the most social of the great apes, and in their groups, all friends are friends with benefits. A simple way to diffuse tension. Calmer than chimps, how do bonobos fare in the cooperation test? Food is placed in a central shared well. Okay, ready? One, two, three! All the food is in the same dish, so it's very easy for one individual to bump the other individual out of the way and steal it all. Okay, Mikasi. Okay, one, two, three, go! It takes the bonobos a while to get on task. But soon they get the hang of it. With their more congenial temperaments, bonobos are more cooperative than chimps are. In fact, bonobos may take cooperation even further. When a young male died at the center in Japan, workers tried to remove his body. The staff decided to use sticks and try to move the bonobo towards a door they mounted uh, an incredible defense of this body that surprised everybody and was extremely moving. That's a fascinating reaction on the part of the bonobos. They were not related to that individual, and yet they took extreme risks to protect his body. As they fend off the humans, it seems as if they are cooperating. But what does it take to work together? Are they comparing the number of staff to their own troops? Can they calculate at all? Um. 
At Kyoto University, Tatsura Matsuzawa's experiments are revealing that chimps can in fact develop an astonishing facility for numbers. He first trained a chimpanzee named I to touch the numeral that matched the number of dots. Once I knew zero to nine, Matsuzawa displayed the numbers helter-skelter on the screen. I quickly learned to touch them in ascending order. In the final test, as soon as I touches the numeral one, white squares cover up the remaining numbers. Can the chimp possibly remember all the numbers and their locations and touch them in order? The performance was really amazing. Much much better than we have expected. But for I, learning numbers was a struggle. Almost the same amount of training was necessary to teach three, teach four, or teach five, or even worse. It takes more time to teach five and then six. I never got the feeling that children get when they realize you just add one to get the next number. In the United States, another ape shows a surprising gift for language. You gonna help get some sticks? Good. A bonobo named Konzi, now at the Great Ape Trust in Iowa, picked up English without being directly taught. Wearing a mask to avoid queuing Konzi, researcher Sue Savage Rombard tests his comprehension. Good job. Go get the ball that's outdoors. Very nice. Thank you, Konzi. Savage Romba measures Konzi's vocabulary at 3,000 spoken English words. While apes can master words and numbers, other research shows that something else is limiting their cooperation. Apes have emotional issues. Rivalry. Violence. And most of all, they are impulsive. In a celebrated study that investigated See? impulse studies have also been I'll run on humans. And then I'll come in. And in a classic I'll experiment of the 1970s, a researcher gives a four-year-old a simple choice. So if you wait for me to get back, I'll give you this bowl with all of these gummy bears, okay? But if you can't wait, you can push that button like this, and then I'll come back and you can have this bowl with just this one gummy bear, okay? Okay? Okay, I'll be right back. According to an inconclusive but intriguing study, the longer the children resisted temptation, 
the higher their school test results would be years later. In any case, the differences between people are small compared to the gap separating humans and apes. Maybe one of the first things that happened during our species evolution is we became much less emotionally reactive. Maybe that's one of the big differences that may explain why we solve problems so differently. We sort of got control of our emotions. Can apes be given skills to help them master their emotions? Now you watch real carefully. Sally Boyson trained a chimp to understand numerals. One, two, three. Symbols can make you free. They can help distance an ape from its impulses. But outside of the lab, apes don't seem to use symbols. Still, ape minds seem to share many of the amazing features of the human mind. They have sophisticated social emotions. They can cooperate. They have culture. Their mental rocket is on the launch pad. Why isn't it taking off? On an average day, human beings file thousands of patents, post tens of thousands of messages over the internet, and think millions of thoughts that have never been thought before. Our closest relatives are different. On a good day, an ape is lucky to use a tool to crack a nut. What prevents ape culture from igniting like the human version? Recent studies that compare the human and ape mind are revealing something surprising. Bonobos like Konzi show their own kind of genius. Could you take off Sue's shoe? Could you take my shoe off, please? You might need to untie it. Even skeptics agree that Konzi understands more words than any other non-human animal. He also uses an array of visual symbols to communicate. But on closer inspection, Konzi, like all great apes, lacks the full mental package. Take Konzi's use of language. Most of the time he will use these symbols to request things. To say, take me there or give me that. Now, Kanzi will not use those symbols to talk about the weather or to just make small talk, which is a very human thing. When human infants communicate with others, they engage in a real conversation where each conversational turn is responsive to the turn that came before, and they even ask for clarification if they need. So you say, huh, or you say, yeah, and you let the other one know uh, how the communication is going. To engage in a real conversation, each speaker needs a sense of what the other is thinking. Call this skill mind reading. Young children have not fully developed it. What we're going to do today, we're going to play a game with my Princess Sally here. See, this is Princess Sally, and she's got a ball that she really likes. This is her ball, but she has to go away for a little bit, so Princess Sally is going to hide her ball right over here in the bag. See Princess Sally hiding her ball right there in the purple bag? Yeah? So here she goes. She's going to go away for just a little bit. Now, while Princess Sally is away, we're going to play a little trick on her, okay? We're going to move her ball from the purple bag over here to the green bag. See how we've moved the ball over there? Okay, so guess what? Princess Sally's coming back. Here she is. She came back. Can you tell me, where is Princess Sally going to first look for her ball? Over here in the green bag. Can you tell me why is Princess Sally going to go over here? Three-year-olds make consistent mistakes about what others know. The thing that's amazing about three-year-olds is how convinced they are about their wrong answer. They're so sure that she's going to look for her ball where it really is, because she wants it, and that's where it is. Princess Sally. But by the age of four, most children are accomplished mind readers. Can you tell me where is Sally first going to look for her ball? It's going to look on the 
in the purple bag so, so she can find her ball. She's going to look in the purple bag so that she can find her ball. As recently as 2001, studies seem to show that apes don't know what others are thinking. But then new experiments began to reveal unexpected skills. In one study, as a chimp approaches a treat, Brian Hare moves it out of reach, establishing himself as a competitor. Next, Hare blocks his own view of one of the treats, but leaves another within his sight. It looks like they're generating a plan and saying to themselves, OK, I want that food, and the one I'm most likely to get is the one he's not looking at, or the one that if I sneak around, he won't see me, and therefore I can have my yummy banana treat. This chimp seems to know what is on Hare's mind, what he can see, and what he can't. So chimps seem to share some of our skills of mind reading. Do we have any mental skills which are uniquely our own? A key clue comes from a new experiment. Back at the University of Texas, Victoria Horner shows a chimp how to operate a puzzle box to get a treat. First she taps, then she slots. Next, she pokes. The chimp copies fairly well and gets the sweet. This game we're going to play is about the special box I brought, all right? There's a gummy bear. It's your turn. Children copy the actions much as the chimps did. Oh, you got him! All right, there's a gummy bear. Good job. The second box that I show the chimpanzees is this one, and it's identical to the opaque box, except that it's made out of material which is see-through. Only now is it obvious that the tapping and poking don't achieve a thing. The box has a false ceiling. The chimps cut to the chase. They skip the needless steps. For the apes, it is all about the treat. What this study shows is that apes don't just mindlessly ape. They also understand something more about cause and effect. We found something quite surprising. The children were predisposed to copy, even when it meant that they were doing something that was really rather silly. So this seems a little like the chimps are outsmarting the kids in this particular study. There he is. You got him out. Why do children imitate slavishly? At the root of the children's behavior is the fact that they viewed me as a grown-up, possibly as a teacher. That children expect to be taught is a vital difference. While apes can copy, most researchers believe that they do not teach each other. <laughs> Learning from someone else is the fastest way to get a new idea. Faster than learning by imitation. Faster than inventing a new technology in the first place. In children, 
A penchant for teaching appears even before language kicks in, in the form of a deceptively simple gesture. Pointing. A toddler knows that the cup being pointed to is the one that hides the treat. Parents love it when their kids start pointing because it's evidence that the kid's trying to communicate with them. Parents definitely notice the difference between babies who just point to ask for things and babies who point to show them things. Apes don't seem to get that kind of pointing. It doesn't matter whether brown hair points or stares or orients his body. This young bonobo is unaware that he is trying to communicate. They were clueless at using the information, even after lots and lots of trials. They didn't use the information I provided them, and it was a big surprise to everybody. Where's this car? Like there. Pointing relies on a particular mental skill. A little difference that makes a big difference. Whenever I point, I'm actually directing your attention towards a third object, and you have to understand that my attention is on that object, and that I'm asking you now to attend to the same object. Yeah. So there's sort of a triangle between us and the object. This mental skill, this triangle, turbocharges teamwork. What you'll see with the human mother and baby is that the mother is constantly trying to show the baby what to do, and the baby is trying to tune in to what the mother wants, and so you have a full triangle of mother and baby and the thing in the environment that they're trying to work on. It's a special cognitive achievement. Yeah, that's right. Green one. Yeah. For some reason, kids do this naturally almost immediately. Beautiful. And curiously, apes can't get into that. At the moment, we have no evidence that apes have shared goals based on shared commitments. They do things together, they coordinate their actions together, but they don't have a shared commitment to a shared goal. The triangle is the core skill that makes teaching possible. Humans have it, apes seem to lack it. But apes are also missing one more thing. It's a key emotional driver. Another blue one on top? The passion to cheer each other on. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, like that. Good. Good. Good job. Well done. Good job. This kind of facilitation, giving a hand, encouragement, is the base of teaching. It seems like it's not just a cognitive capacity that's necessary for teaching. There's this other thing, which is wanting to teach. Uh, that seems to be really pervasive in humans and may be mysteriously missing in apes. The pieces are now coming together. Apes have a culture, a rare achievement in the animal world. They can learn from each other through imitation. But this process is passive, often slow, and can easily backslide. Probably there's a lot of slippage, there's a lot of loss of cultural innovations between generations when you're talking about a chimpanzee. If an ape invents something new and important and interesting, maybe some others will learn it, maybe they won't. Unique among animals, humans have both the passion and the mental skill to teach each other. When you're a student rather than a spectator, learning happens rapidly. That's because teaching locks in progress. Human cultural traditions uh, have a cumulative quality that each generation builds on the things of the previous generation. So if you look at the history of any interesting technology, it started out simple and the children of that generation learned the simple version, but then some genius made an improvement to it and everyone follows right away and we get this ratcheting up in complexity. An ape may stand on another's shoulders, but only humans can stand on the intellectual shoulders of giants. It's such a great privilege to be able to work with these animals and try to understand what's going on in their head when they look at you so gingerly and softly. Is it they're thinking, oh, he's such a nice guy, and boy, I wish I knew what was going on in his head? Or is she thinking, gosh, what's that spot? Is it dirt? Could I eat that? In spite of their limitations, when we look into the eyes of a fellow ape, 
we don't feel a gap, but a deep connection. We can't resist a chimp reaching out for help, or a group of unrelated bonobos rallying to the defense of another, or a mother refusing to let go of her dead baby. But as the most social of apes, we can't help reading thoughts and feelings into the mind behind any familiar face. And perhaps that says more about us than them. <laughs>